<laughs> okay, so I'm now Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hello. Astrophysics brought down to Earth, or whatever he says. Anyway, your personal astrophysicist, Neil, here, he did a recent episode about, uh, of Star Talk. <laughs> I'm covering him the whole time. Of Star Talk. And he was talking with Chuck Nice about the simulation argument. So I've, I talk about this in almost every live show because people always ask me about it. So, uh, but here's a quick recap. So the simulation argument is that if you accept all the premises, there's a very small chance that you are an actual meat person in meat space. There's a very good chance that you're a simulation if you accept the premises. The premises are that sometimes, uh, given that sometime in the future, we will have sufficiently power, powerful computers which can reproduce reality to us in a way that is indistinguishable from base reality. So you could simulate a brain that thought it was a brain living, a, a, living its best life, really. So that's, that's the first premise, that we will do that. And the second is that there's no, uh, there won't be any uh, hindrances for humanity getting there. We will, we will want to create these kinds of simulators, and we will not ban you know, artificial intelligence or, or something like that as a way uh, towards getting there. The third premise in this trilemma, not even a dilemma. Yeah, I know. They can have different prefixes. Uh, in this trilemma is that you, I am stalling because I forgot what the last part of the trilemma was. Oh, it's that, <laughs> it's that these, this hypothetical human civil civilization would want to run ancestor simulations. So the, the last premise is that these people want to simulate people like us to a sufficient degree. So now if you accept all of those premises, then given sufficiently powerful computers or AI, and we went through this on the Jupiter brain, planet computers on the facility recently, if you haven't watched it, please do. But when you have a computer that powerful, that theoretically powerful, you could create trillions of simulations that would be indistinguishable from reality with people in them that would think they are people and they wouldn't be able to tell. So, to close up our recap, if, there's, if, if you can create trillions of quote-unquote ancestor simulations and it's indistinguishable from reality, you would not be able to tell, then the chances that you are in base reality right now that you are in base reality out of the trillions of other virtual realities are very small. You are probably a simulation then. What Neil said was kind of something similar in that he found uh, the argument to be a good one, that if you accept the premises, it's very hard to refute. There's not a lot of good arguments if you're on board against, you know, you not being a simula uh, you being a simulation. But what he said, he, he, he went, uh, you know, but I came up with one. Or uh, his friend thought of one. He's like, okay, I thought of one that actually makes our chances of being real better. And what he said was, was that the likelihood of us being simulated in this time are low. So he used an analogy for like a movie. So there's not a whole lot of movies when we create media and we create, you know, stories we want to see how they play out. There's not a lot of movies that take place in, you know, the 1100s, relatively speaking, that don't have the technology to make movies. So there's not a lot of movies, relatively speaking, again, I know there are, there are, there are many, you know, historic and, you know, documentaries and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. But there's not a whole lot of movies that take place in a time where you don't have the technology to make movies. So his argument, or his friend's argument, was that because we do not have this kind of simu ultimate simulation technology right now, and we're not living through this, then it's unlikely that we are a simulation. We are then probably on the road, or maybe, we are probably base reality, and we may or may not create simulators in the future. And, you know, it might be too hard to simulate a simulator inside of a simulation. And this would put some, some breaks on this whole thing and it makes your chances, you know, 
50%, which is uh, chances Neil said he would take. It's interesting, uh, but I think it falls kind of flat because I don't agree with you, Neil. Saying that right, I'm just saying. We got a badass over here. I'm just saying that you are assigning a likely, a perceived likelihood based on some arbitrary assumption. And I'm not saying it's a bad assumption. I'm just saying that who's to say that the ancestor, uh, that our uh, hyper-advanced civilization wouldn't want to simulate the human civilization as it is right now in 2020? Or what year is it? I can't even tell anymore. But who's to say that they wouldn't want to do that? Well, you can make an argument, you know, that they would or that they wouldn't, but at the end of the day, you have no idea what they would choose and why. So because that's not really knowable, or I don't think it's very likely that you'd know the right answer to that, then there's not a good reason why they couldn't simulate us at our time without simulators, and they want to see how that works or what happened. You know, that's possible. There's another problem. Uh, because once you accept the premises, you're kind of on board for this. And the other thing is that, again, there's a scale problem. When you have like a Jupiter brain, a planet-sized computer, something that could simulate all of human history in an instant, literally, you can have trillions or billions at least of possible realities. And so with so many different realities, even if simulating our pre-simulator time is boring for them, they could still, you know, throw aside a thousand of those simulations to check it out. And there's still a, and there's still, you know, a trillion more realities. So even, even if this simulation, us as a simulation is very unlikely, there's so many possible realities in this situation that we're still very likely to be a simulation. Do you understand what I mean? Because there's not just like two simulations. And think about this, there would only have to be four simulations or there'd only have to be three simulations rather for your chances to not be in meat space right now to be 75%. Now extend that out to a trillion simulations. So if, again, if you accept, if you accept the premises, it makes it very hard to refute the simulation argument. I do not exactly consider this one to be a good refutation. Let's go to the chat.